we've got the 43 kilo equipped superstar Jasmine Barlow and her coach Tom Beal. Welcome to the press conference. Thank you. To start off with, um, Jasmine, I just want to ask you, you competed at the Open World Championships last year, and now you competed again at the World Championships as a junior at the Junior World Championships. Tell us a little bit about the differences between the two and the differences between your performance. Um, so last year was actually my first year competing and my first year like um, going to Worlds. And so Tom actually did not go to Worlds with me last year. So I was kind of in the dark on my coaching situation. I showed up and met my coach the day of. So that was definitely a big change this year. Who was that coach? James Thompson. And um, last year, I actually missed my opening squat because I was the first out on the platform for the entire meet. So I got a little nervous. Um, managed to not do that this time. So. All right. Well, good job. And then tell us, how did the day go here? Um, it went okay. I went five for nine. Not my best meet, but I was on the board, placed fourth. So. All right, and go ahead and tell us a little bit about, like, walk us through each lift. Like, how did squat go? How did bench? How did um, so I got my opening squat and then missed my second attempt and missed it again on my third because I was just fatigued, I guess, from the traveling. Um, and then bench went really well. I went three for three and hit a meet PR. Uh, and then deadlift came around. I hit my opener. And then on my second attempt, I missed it. And I tried again on my third. And it ended up getting overturned. It was red-lighted for um, soft knees. But... It's fine. Yeah, it was a heck of a grind. Congratulations on finishing off your day strong like that. Tom, uh, you're Jasmine's coach. Do you want to just um, talk a little bit about how proud you are of her performance today? And also, um, given the fact that she's hasn't, tell us a little bit of her backstory. How long has she been lifting? How long have you been coaching her? And what progress have you seen her made since last year to now? Sure, absolutely. She's very new to the sport, as she said. This is only her second year competing. And so she's gone from competing on a, a regional level to state championships to nationals and then competing on the world stage very quickly. Um, and she repeated it again this year. And really, I think two things she's made improvements in sort of overall consistency in her training. Um, and even though she didn't necessarily hit the numbers that she wanted to today, uh, she did hit a, a meet PR and bench, which was really good. And I think one of the one of the biggest things we've seen improvements in is she's been able to put on. We put on seven pounds of muscle on her in the last year. Um, she went from weighing just eighty three pounds to weighing ninety pounds, and I think that's made a big difference in her overall level of strength. If we can continue that, I think as she goes into her third year of lifting, we're going to see some big numbers come up. And I think the more experience that she gets. Um, on big stages, I think she's going to start doing better and better. So, as she said with her squat, first one looked great, second and third, I think the fatigue hit her a little bit, and and the she was able to come back on bench, rest a little bit between the two, and get her mind right and hit all three benches. And her first deadlift was really good. Uh, second one got off a little bit, and then – I think the the third death lift was great. We had uh, several coaches in the back that that agreed. Uh, I know she was red lighting on it, but I think it was a fantastic grind, and she didn't give up. Got it. That's what I really wanted for her. So she got that third deadlift, and whether or not they liked it, I liked it. Yeah, could you just uh, explain a little bit uh, the difference from last year's e equipped open now to being part of the, the junior uh, team and, you know, lifting with the team that's closer in age to what you actually are. I mean, just some of the differences in a different environment, if you could just maybe go through that a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um, so I was one of the youngest lifters at Open Worlds um, and the least experienced at Open Worlds. So it's nice to have other athletes that are around me that, like, actually understand the level that I'm at and they're not – five, ten years more experience than I am. <laughs> okay, this is a question for, I guess, team Jasmine. So Tom and Jasmine both. But considering you were three kilos underneath your weight class, what's the plan moving forward? Do you plan on filling out your weight class? 
do you plan on moving up? How does that kind of look? Tom mentioned that you gained seven pounds of muscle. So putting that on top of everything, how does that look in the next coming year for you? You want to start? Sure. Um, so the goal for this coming year is to put on another five pounds of muscle and sort of fill out my weight class. And then I'm hoping to sit at 95 pounds until I have to switch to open. And then we'll make the change to go into 105. We're starting Operation Jacked <laughs> Jasmine as of tomorrow morning, <laughs> where she will be eating maximum calories and protein on a daily basis. I'd like to put on at least five pounds of muscle. It'd be awful nice to have to pull her back a little bit on her eating, but we're going to get there. We have, we have another year, so Jack Jasmine is coming your way. Okay, I have a follow-up to that. So considering your gear's a little tight on you, you had to have some extra help putting it on. Uh, you mentioned at weigh-ins that you were never going back to a smaller suit, that you were never going back to a smaller suit that you're only going to go up from here. How does that look for you next year? What do you anticipate? Are you gonna be swinging on a bar at Worlds next year too? I mean, I feel like that's part of it. Like your, your equipment has to fit correctly. You don't want it loose. So I feel like it's better to, for it to be harder to get on than to like easily slide into your suit. Okay, Jasmine. Um, you had a great performance. You've had a lot of international experience at a super young age. We're extremely proud of you. We're really happy that you're representing the USA and Power of Team America. And we're looking forward to whatever you do next and whatever your next goals are. And um, with that, we're going to let you go. All right. So Thank go you. ahead. Yep. <laughs> All right. We've got the 59 kilo sub junior duo here with Nick. And JT, uh, first of all, we'll go to the savvy veteran, Nick, and just tell us a little bit about how the day went for you. Felt good. <laughs> all right. Can you elaborate a little bit on, uh, you know, how the day unfolded? I mean, squad, that was a very great experience to actually go through for three on squad, especially at this level, since I know, like, squad depth is very touchy here. It was very, very great to see that. Ben, same, pretty much same thing, same thing with like touches and stuff. I know at this level it gets really difficult. And then deadlift, I mean, it, it all came down to that, but couldn't lock it. But it, hey, still a good day overall. Yeah, so tell us about the bench. What happened on your third bench? Third bench, I think I touched a little too low on me and it just got away from me. I also, when I rewatched the video, my heel came up, so it would have been no good anyway. Um, did the weight feel heavy? No. Okay. Cause, cause I, I know after they put in your number, you kind of second guessed maybe trying to go down uh, on that third attempt. And so how do you think that would have been a smarter choice or are you happy with the number that you took? No, I'm happy with what I was going for. It was just, I guess it was just a little too heavy, but I know in the position I was, I know I was trying to make as much pound difference as I could, but or kilo difference. And it just it just got away from me that time. And then what happened on that third dead? Third deadlift when I rewatched it, that <laughs> I can't believe how high that got up because I don't know it just it just got away at the top and I couldn't couldn't drive it anymore. All right, and are there any um, lessons that you took away from today and any goals that you have? I know you talked a little bit about it right after the competition was over. Um, you know, in the past, like you said, you're coming off a big streak of wins and then now this is your first time finishing second. How has that sunk in since it's been a few hours now? And like, how are you dealing with that? And what are your goals going forward? Oh, no, I went to sleep immediately. So I've been avoiding that. And uh, it definitely hasn't sunk it in yet. You can see I'm smiling. So nah, it ain't sunk in. But uh, yeah, right now I'm just I'm just worried about what we going to eat and everything. Trying to stay happy while I'm here, you know, going to take some pictures for the fam back home. Cause I know once that sinks in, it's going it's time to get on in the training, you know. Uh, so Nick, how did uh, how did this new weight class? I think a lot of people it it, it was maybe a surprise to them, but uh, you were nominated at fifty three. 
uh, you made a decision to go up to 59. Uh, just maybe elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, I know the, the cut to 53 was pretty pretty difficult whenever we first started talking about it. And then <laughs> you actually said, yeah, we should try going up, fully accepted it. And I should have, to be, <laughs> to be honest, gone up a long time ago since the numbers, they all went up pretty pretty significantly. The weight got a lot more consistent. I know I was happy because I could actually eat and not be starving on a single grain of rice and a portion of chicken. <laughs> But, I mean, it just, it all falls in itself. More weight on you, more weight you're going to do. And I see I see that firsthand since coming up a weight class and being able to basically fight it out for first. So it was it was pretty cool. Awesome. JT, you're a young sub junior. You'll be back next year, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. Nick's aging out. You had a good meet today. Oh, yeah, I had an um, amazing meet. You could just elaborate on your meet a little bit. Um, so basically I went three for three on squat. I was real happy with my numbers and all that. Felt real good. And then we got to bench and then I hit, um, I hit me PRs and bench and deadlift. Not, I'm sorry, not deadlift, bench and squat and all that. Um, and then deadlift, I don't really know what happened with my third deadlift, but yeah, I had fun, competed, lost to him. Again. <laughs> This is the first time we competed against each other. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Usually you lose when I'm in the lower weight class. What do you mean? <laughs> nah, play. You have you got me on the last two, except regionals though. Yeah. Dude, I get no, I nice. win. Next time, whenever we do this, this time I'm gonna beat you on deadlift. I said I was gonna do it this time, I didn't. I'm gonna do it next I like, time. I like to see that day. I like to see that day. <laughs> that day will be soon. Oh yeah. Don't worry, buddy. At least at least we both got something we can be proud of. You got your deadlift medal deadlift. and I got my bench medal. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so jt i mean you're known as a big deadlifter but you went three for three uh you went six for six basically going into deadlifts and i think you were eight for eight going into your fa your last pull yes. so just what happened on that last deadlift i mean your, your second attempt moved so fast everyone thought that you for sure were going to get that third uh i don't really know it kind of got caught on my knees a little bit and then it just stopped moving at like once i got to my knees area and Oh, no, I fell over. Okay. And um, so, I mean, was there any kind of takeaways that you have as far as, like, what you're going to work on going forward? Because, I mean, the deadlift is your weapon. So, you're going to need to get three deadlifts in going forward, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, me and Coach John, we got to talk about that. He's got to figure something out because I'm just the student and he's the coach. All right. That's great. That's, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Uh, you're going to listen to the coach. All right, John, you're gonna have to come up with something. Does anyone else have any questions for these guys? Yep, go ahead. <laughs> oh, this one's for both of y'all, whoever wants to answer first. With it being your first international meet. <laughs> so this is like both of y'all's first international meet on like the big stage with the IPF. How does it, how do you prepare for it coming in with travel and just getting used to jet lag? Sleep. Yes. <laughs> eating right and you just No, no, not eating it. right. No, no one said that. <laughs> Did you eat right? Oh, I, I ate I, right. You ate right? I ate right. Dude, I ate a little bit, made way, and then I ate a lot. <laughs> yeah. So well, what, what did it feel like being for the first time at an international competition? That was a really good question by, by Jacob. Um, what, was, a, was it, it really didn't, did it live up to the hype? I mean, was it any oh, yeah. different than competing at nationals? What was it like? It really didn't feel like I was traveling the world to come compete here until I started competing. And then I like it really set in, and I'm like, it was just like, oh no, felt good. I guess still ain't really set in for me. For me, it was just like I'm still in the weight room, but now people are giving me commands, and I'm just here. Like I'm just seeing everything, which I I am loving that gas station down there. I'm gonna get some food from there. Love that. Love Romania. Love it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a nice place. So do, do you have, uh, after coming here, do you have, like, a, a greater desire to get back to the world stage? Is oh, yeah. it different? Or oh, yeah. Or is it just, like, another meet for you? Um, so before I, st before I came here, I was, like, I'm probably my only year competing at a world level. But after today, I'm, I'm coming back next year. 
after fighting for first for that long, especially after being ranked dead last, I know I can say I'm coming for first next year in Junior Worlds. Okay, thank you guys so much. Um, you did, uh, what, regardless of any of the outcomes, you represented your country really well, really strong. Um, you both have really bright futures. And um, yeah, we're really proud of you. So congratulations on your performance. You should be proud of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we got Johnny Besserell, world champion in the 53 sub juniors. And we got Landon Diepenbrock, 66 kilo rising star in the juniors. A very young junior that has a really bright future. To start off with, um, I want to actually go straight to Johnny and say, first of all, congratulations, world champion. Um, thank you so much for representing Poverty in America and the United States and bringing home all gold medals across the board. Um, it's been a few hours since you were crowned the king of the 53s in the world. How has it settled in? How, how are you thinking about it now? Has it sunk in that you're the world champion, you're the best in the world? Uh, honestly, I, I can't really express how much I feel, but it, I, I, I can feel, I don't know. <laughs> he feels it. Yeah, I feel it. It's coming. It feels good? Yeah, it does. Fit. So what was it like being up there on the podium and having them play the national anthem uh, because of your performance? Oh, it was great. I almost teared up, to be honest, but yeah. That's a lot of people do. Um, and was this your first time at the World Championships? Yes, sir. And so what was the experience like overall? Oh, it was great. It was, I've got to meet new people also. And you have a family of world champions, right? You're not the first one in your family to be a world champ. I have a sister. Tell us about her. Uh, her name is Janet. And I think it was in 2017, she won a world championship in Poland. And she broke some world records also. I'm not sure which ones. All right, so it runs in the family. All right, Landon, we'll, Johnny, we'll let you gather your thoughts and we'll come back to you to talk about, uh, take you through the day by day or the lift by lift performance that you had today. Um, but we'll go over to Landon first. So Landon, you didn't have the day that you wanted, um, but you still persevered. You finished strong. Um, you still put up some nice numbers on bench and some nice numbers, uh, finish off your third deadlift super clean and super fast. So, takes a lot of mental fortitude to, you know, go through what you went. Why don't you tell us about how the day unfolded for you? So uh, with the whole squat situation, I, I really thought I got the first one from what the judges said. We had a overturned ruling and I went to the back and I really didn't know that it got overruled until I was about to get up for the second one. So basically I, I went in the mindset that I went to for my senior year at state because at state, same situation happened. Uh, I was about to bomb out on squat. I went on my last squat and it was a fight for it, but I got my last squat and it passed through. So I figured same, same situation probably going to happen here, but, um, it didn't unfold that way. And, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna work on some things, maybe do some more SBD days, try and build up my endurance at meets. I feel like that's where I probably fall because on a, Single single lift days, I do pretty good. So I think it might just be an endurance thing for me. But we're gonna buff it out, and in the end, we're gonna build a great total. And then just to follow up on that, how did you? So you didn't make a squat. You bombed out on squats. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a rite of passage for a lot of equip lifters. But then, how did you, you know, persevere and come back and finish strong? Man, I, I like lifting. I, I like I like being out there. Um, I, I was a little nervous this time around. I don't know what was wrong. Um, but I, I enjoy being out there. I enjoy be doing my thing in front of everybody. I like to put on a little show. I might have, I might not be the most energetic, like my teammate, Nick, Nick, uh, Nick. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he's always dancing around and stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I kind of get in the zone a little bit, but I enjoy being out there and just putting on a show for everybody. Landon, you were in Turkey last year. Uh, if you could just elaborate on some of the, the differences from, from last year to this year. So last year in Turkey, we 
we squatted. We had, we didn't bomb out. That's a big difference. I play I placed last year. I got a, I got a, I built a total, and um. No, I was junior. Yeah, that was my first Worlds, actually. It was last year. My first Worlds, 66. Same weight class. We I haven't had a problem with cutting weight. This year, I didn't have a problem either. Um, so I, I do plan to sit around this weight class, see how the offseason goes, and build off of that. But as far as last year compared to this year, I feel like this year we honestly had a better setup as far as the the meat setup, like the um, – the warm up area, we have closer food options to us rather than just hotel food. Um, we had more accessibility to things, and I felt that made a big difference. So, this question is for Jonathan. Oh boy. Your neck heavy? What was that? Your neck heavy from all that gold? No, not yet. Ah. <laughs> no. I need more. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, you need more? Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. And follow-up question for both of you. What are we going to eat after this? I ordered pizza. Nice. <laughs> Half the, the people questions? in the room ordered pizza. All right, so Johnny, t take us through the day. Now you had a chance to get used to these bright lights in here, um, and you're going to have to get used to them going forward. Um, just kind of tell us, like, you know, how you were feeling coming in, and uh, how squat, bench, and deadlift all went. I know you. I think you missed a squat. You missed your third squat. You missed your third deadlift. So, kind of walk us through and tell us what happened. Uh, well, first thing, I'm not really good at these interviews, so this is my first time really ever doing these. So you're I'm doing not... you're doing great, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, my squat, I'm not sure what happened. I think it was heavy or misgrew. And my bench, I I messed up on my start command. Oh, yeah, you missed your opening bench. Yes. That's right. And that was my fault because I forgot my commands. And deadlift, I just missed it because it was heavy. I couldn't get it off the ground. All right, man. Well, uh, we're really proud of both of your performances. Um, it's always awesome to crown a new world champion uh, wearing red, white, and blue. So thank you both for your performances. We can't wait to see what you do next. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We got Jayla Johnson, 47 kilo sub junior, and her coach, John, here in the house. Um, Jayla, just to start off with, kind of tell us about how the day unfolded for you and what it was like being here at the World Championships and just how you rate your performance on the day overall. Um, it was very stressful. I started to doubt myself in the beginning and I couldn't get my hair right. And I was very nervous. I let ner my nervousness take over me. And so that's how I ended up in third place. Um, overall, I rate my uh, squats benches and deadlifts um a five and a half out of ten it wasn't good <laughs> so what why why do you think you were so nervous today was this meet different than any other is this your it first was, time at the international level it was fast very different it felt like i had a lot of pressure on myself uh, people was depending on me it was, it was a lot and john you want to just kind of Talk about how proud you are of her performance today, the things that she did well today. Well, I'm proud that she lost her last world championship. That makes me happy. That's a quote from somebody else, by the way. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> it was a rough day, but it's not the last day, right? Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so do you want to just kind of talk about, you know, um, all the pressure that was on her and how she handled it? There was no pressure on her. Pressure was from herself because she had high expectations, which is the way we do it. So, you know, she expected to do well, and uh, it wasn't as well as we planned. Okay. 
Coach, you've been on the stage uh, many times uh, as a coach of this team. Uh, your, your coaching accolades are plenty. Uh, and just knowing the uh, different uh, variables that come into play for a meet like this, international meet, travel, different food, uh, just everything that comes with that. Uh, what's, what's your thoughts just on the adjustments that Jayla had to make throughout the day just to kind of keep keep chopping wood? Um, adjustments from today? We didn't make them. Uh, the, the, truthfully, the, the um, I don't get too technical, but um, the roots of this performance were from about 48 hours ago when she weighed a lot lighter than she needed to be. Um, this is the second time she's ever actually made the 40, 47 weight class. Uh, and she made it about three days ago. Uh, and that's the problem. And so trying to get back up to where, you know, if, if this had happened, if, if she had made weight differently, yes. it would have been a completely different performance, 100%. And this is not a, it's not a fault, by the way. It's the second time you ever tried to do it. So that's the way it is. But as far as the lifts, um, the nerves were in there. Oh, to my yeah. heat. You're right. Yeah, she was in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> so just was it to give me like they needed to be. So speaking of that, what, uh, what do you see in store for, say, the next year uh, trying, to get, trying to get back? Well, we've got a high school season to go through, um, and we're going to see – what her body does as far as weight class for that, because no, no decisions are really made on that. But as far as uh, I personally don't see a 103 competition for her in the future, to be honest. So I think we're gonna go through the high school season and uh, the next time you see her at a PA meet, it'll probably be at 114 for high school nationals. Normally I wouldn't say something like that with the whole year of training for the whole world to go through, but that's what I feel. I wanted to do whatever body's going to do, but cutting down to 103 has <laughs> so far not been a super deal for us. So, so we'll avoid the 114 next year. Is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a decision for somebody else to make. Jayla, beyond the lifts and the performance today, um, just tell us about the experience coming here, being on uh, the world stage, competing for a world championship, competing with the best athletes in the world, um, traveling all the way over here to Romania. Uh, just how is the overall experience for you? I think it's cool. A lot of people don't get the chance to do this, especially my age. And um, I think it's I think it's nice. Romania is nice, not the food, not food, not, but it's nice. <laughs> and I mean, does it do? You, did it spark an interest for you to want to get back to the World Championships next year and many more times after that? <laughs> no. No. Why not? I, I look the hot mess today. I'm gonna be honest. But if I if I end up getting better oh, next year, I'll if? come back. What you mean if? Like like better than how I was. You still finished really strong. I mean, I did. And you earned your spot on this team. There's no one better than you that could have had that spot. So I think you're being really hard on yourself. But um, obviously, you're gonna have a fire to improve, and that'll be good. Mm -hmm. We'll come back even stronger next year. So, does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> Jayla, um, as like the competition went through and we were able to kind of watch you through all your lifts and through the podium and getting medaled, you're a you're a lady of many faces, and I would just love to know the background between all these faces that you made on the podium, the little giggles, the smiles, all of it, where that stemmed from and everything like that. Um, so at first I was, I wasn't smiling. I wasn't trying to smile. But my mom and my teammates was fussing at me through the crowd, telling me to smile. So I was trying to smile. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love well, you have a. Oh, you got a question? Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> How much did you have to cut? Me? And the time frame you had to cut it. So I think five pounds, five pounds, that's it. But it was hard. Oh, I know. I know. It was hard. <laughs> and it's, I think it was a month. No, no, a month. Two, two months, I would say. Still hard. That's fair. <laughs> okay, Jayla, we'll let you go. Um, we're really proud of you and your performance. Um, it's great to see you smiling here, even though you're being really hard on yourself as far as your performance is concerned. Um, because I think there's a lot of people out there that would trade places with you in a heartbeat mm -hmm. for the performance that you put up. And the fact that you're not satisfied with it is just a sign that you're going to be a world champion one day. So we're looking forward to everything you do in the future. And congratulations, John, uh, as well on your coaching as well. So thank you. Thank That's you. it. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming to the press conference. The first press conference at the Junior World Championships. Thank <laughs> you.